Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, and taking care of yourself out there. And if you're new here, my name's Jim. I make tutorial videos here showing you how I use various software products to edit my images. I'm always looking for fun, creative, different things to do just to create the image that I want. And today I'm in Luminar 4 and I've got a photo here. Let me just show it to you. There's the base image. Now I did crop it. This is a street scene. And I've been doing a number of videos recently about masking. There's in Luminar, you've got brush masking, you've got gradient masking, you've got radial masking, and you've got luminosity masking. And so I've done some videos about different components of that. And I thought it'd be fun to do every one of those on the same image and show how I would use a brush mask, a gradient mask, a radial mask, and a luminosity mask on the same image for different things. So that's what this video is all about. I've pre-cropped this image, but otherwise I've done nothing to it. I'm on the base layer, and as you can imagine, all this masking is gonna take a lot of layers. So we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna start in the light tool. I start with a bit of contrast. I go to about 30, and I'm just kind of setting the stage here. Uh, neg negative 47 on highlights. Shadows, I bump those up about 38. Then I go to AI accent. I give that a little bump, about 18 or so. And then I go to AI structure, and I go to about 23. So there we go. Uh, now let me show you my before and after. There's my base image and that's my current state. So that's often what I'll do on the base image. If I know I'm going to be working on layers and masks and lots of different things to focus on specific parts of a photo, I will go kind of balance things out, for lack of a better word, kind of massage the photo a little bit on that base layer. And then I start adding stuff and that's what I'm going to do now. First thing I'm gonna do is click on the layers panel. I'm gonna say plus add new adjustment layer. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go grab one of my looks. So I'm gonna go over here into my London Calling uh, preset pack or looks pack and I'm gonna put that at 100 and stick that on the photo. Now, it's fairly blue, it's fairly bright and colorful and that sort of thing and I don't really want all that. So I'm gonna use a luminosity mask. I've done that in a lot of videos where I will apply a preset and it can be a bit heavy-handed depending on the image. In this case, it is heavy-handed. Uh, but a luminosity mask allows you to sort of get a tamer, more subtle look to the photo. So I'm going to click on luminosity, and it will build that for you, and then apply it to the photo, and you'll immediately recognize the difference. Okay, and there you go. And in fact, I'm going to use the adjustment amount slider, which is a really great thing to have on a layer. And I'm going to reduce that to about 85. So let me turn this off. There's the before, you can see that a little bit uh, less, I don't know, colorful, blue, that sort of thing, and the current state. And so a luminosity mask, let me click, click on brush and click on the masking icon. That's what a luminosity mask looks like. It's a mask automatically built based on light values. So the brighter parts of the photo get a more heavy application of the mask and therefore more of your edits show up in the brighter parts and the darker parts get a less intense application. So the really dark parts like these shadowed areas, they're basically still black, which means the mask is not being applied. Where you see more red or pink, whatever color you wanna call this, you're getting more of the mask. Also note, you can go into the masking menu and click invert if you wanna have the opposite, but I don't. I'm gonna leave it like that and I'm gonna say done. I'm done with this layer. Now I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and get started on a different mask. Okay, in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of darken some of that left-hand side. And what I'm doing is basically, obviously it's a street scene, the light's kinda of coming in, and I kinda of wanna make the light show a little bit on the right-hand side and a little bit less on the uh, left-hand side. So I'm gonna use a gradient mask for that. So click on Edit Mask and Gradient, and then I'm gonna come over here and just kinda of click and drag, and I'm gonna make kind of a little bit of a wide gradient zone, maybe something about like that. Um, and you know, I don't really want to make a massive difference. I just want to create a little bit more shadow over there. So my mask is going to look like that. So if you click on the, uh, the eyeball, you can kind of see what the mask look, looks like. So a gradient mask is based on a straight line. Um, it's still straight, even though it's tilted, if that makes sense. The line is straight, but it's at an angle. As you can see, uh, you can move that around. You can tilt it, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not going to deep dive into all these masks because that would make a very long video, but basically, the, the edits I'm about to make are going to apply 100% up here. And as you can see here, they're in a gradient area. Here's a much less gradient. And then below that, it's basically zero. So I'm going to say done. And I'm going to go over here and get, I need to look at my notes. I'm going to get the light tool for starters. I'm going to take the exposure down like a negative one and change. 
So something, uh, I think I was about like that. And I'm gonna take smart contrast up by about 10. So you can kind of see how that darkened that area a little bit. In fact, I might pull that back just a little bit. Maybe I'll just go to one. I'm just creating a little bit more darkness over there, which seems to me um, like it makes kind of sense for that to be in shadow. And then I'm gonna go over to Pro and I'm gonna go to Photo Filter. And here I'm gonna get a hue of about 230, um, which is very solidly in the blues. And the amount is gonna be 25. So let me show you that. So basically I created with the light tool and the exposure slider, based on the mask, I created a little bit darker area over there. And then with photo filter, still applying to the same area because I did a mask at the layer level. I'm adding some blue, which to me creates a little bit more shadow look. So if I turn that off, you can see before a bit warmer and after a bit cooler, which to me again indicates shadow and it's more shadowed because I created that shadow over here with the light tool. So if you go look at the layer and let me show you, there's the before, turn that off. You can see that's a, a bit brighter and warmer and now it's a little bit darker and cooler. Also keep in mind that when you create masks, you can see it down here, it's a little bit harder on a luminosity mask because this is kind of small. But basically, um, when you create a mask at the layer level, it will give you a visual representation of the mask there in that box. So white reveals, black conceals. Reveals means your edits are shown and conceals means they're not. So where it's white, your edits are showing up. Where it's black, your edits are not. Okay, so we've done a luminosity mask for this base layer, and now we've done a gradient mask. Let's go get a radial mask. I'm gonna say new adjustment layer, edit mask, and I'm gonna get a radial mask. And what I wanna do here is I wanna do some things around these bikes. And so I'm gonna create a little bit of an oval shape, and it's gonna take me a second to get this straight, and I'm gonna tilt it, um, and then I'm gonna expand this, and I'm gonna move it, whoops, uh, not like that. Got to grab that center just right. I'm going to move it here. Let's see. I'm going to pull that back a little bit first. Expand that gradient area and then, or excuse me, the center area. And now expand the gradient area. And I might center this a little bit more. So let me show you the mask. It looks like that. That's what our, a radial mask is. It can be a, a, a circle or oval kind of shape. I made it kind of oval. However, I want it to apply inside that area. So I'm going to click invert and my mask is now applied like that. So what I've done is I've basically painted a kind of oval shape over that area and whatever edits I do in this layer are gonna apply inside that pink oval. So I'm gonna get into the light tool. I'm gonna give it a little bit of warmth. I mean, really just a nudge, like a seven. Um, I'm gonna also give it an exposure bump. So about a 47 or whoops. Um, here we go, so 48, 47, something like that. I'm just trying, trying to create a little bit more light there because remember I created a little darkness in the other side, I want a little bit of light here. Um, and then I'm gonna go AI accent and I'm gonna go to about 48 or so, something like that. So you can kinda, actually I'm gonna pull that back to maybe about 40. You can kinda see what I've done. Let me turn off this layer. There's the before. You can see it's darker on that side of the street and the the bikes in that side of the street are a little bit more in shadow. And now I've added some light there with the radial mask and a couple of slider moves to give me a little bit more visibility into that. And you know, I'm also trying to lead the viewer's eye. I like, I like street scenes a lot because there's all these natural lines. And in this case, that curved line, I like how it kind of goes like that. And I kind of, I feel like my eye is kind of drawn that way, but in the original photo, it's obviously a bit darker. So I'm crafting the light using these masks to kind of draw your eye down that. Um, so I'm kind of done with that. Now I'm gonna go get a regular adjustment layer. And here I'm gonna use some brush masking because hey, I told you I'm gonna use all of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is AI structure and I'm gonna to go to about 50. And this is gonna pop kind of that grittiness and it's gonna go across the entire photo, but I don't want it on the whole photo. That's why I'm using a brush mask. So I'm gonna say brush and I'm gonna make sure that I'm on paint. I'm gonna increase my brush size, and what I'm gonna do is basically paint this structure adjustment in to some of these areas, like primarily the street, and a little bit of this area that I did the radial masking on as well. Just trying to give the street scene a little bit of punch. Let me check my notes. Uh, yeah, that's really it. So if you look at the mask, there you go. You can always come back and do some touch up. I always miss some areas. So I wanna kinda of touch those up. 
and I think my mask is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna say done. Let me show you what that brush mask did. Keep in mind, I kind of painted that, kind of that right hand bottom corner. If I turn this off and you look at the wall here, it's a little less crunchy, same with the street. And when I added AI structure and brushed it into those areas, I got a little bit more crunch, which is what I was going for. Okay, I'm gonna go back and use another luminosity mask. So I'm gonna say plus and I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. And this time I'm gonna get a different look from my London Calling pack. This one is called Stop for a Pint. Let's see, uh, let me find it. They're alphabetical, so it should be easy to find. There we go, that's at 81. I'm gonna bump that up to 100. And um, once again, I'm gonna apply this with a luminosity mask. So you will see when it gets applied at 100%, it's kind of, um, it's, it's a bit much, right? So that, again, that's another reason I like luminosity masks. You create them and they apply a bit more subtly, which I like to do with my presets quite a bit. Okay, and there you go. So the before, there it is, and the after. And if you recall from a moment ago what the preset looked like before I did the luminosity mask, you'll know this is a bit more subtle. Once again, you can make adjustments here if you want to with the adjustments amount. I'm actually gonna leave it like that, I like it. Um, so there's another luminosity mask, but I'm not done. I'm gonna go get another adjustment layer and keep editing. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is click over here to light and I'm gonna get the exposure slider and I'm gonna bump this up to about 78 uh, for exposure, but I don't want that across the entire photo. So once again, I'm gonna get a radial mask and I'm just gonna pop this over here onto this bike. Now I need to adjust the shape, which I'm doing here. And I need to rotate this a little bit, maybe about like that. Maybe expand that zone and scoot it over a little bit. And then of course I need to invert it because um, I don't want the mask to be over there. I want the mask to cover that. And so basically all I'm doing is creating a brighter spot around that bike to make it a little bit more visible. And now that I see it, I think 78 is a little too much. So maybe I'll pull that down to 67, 68. All I'm doing is just taking another radial mask this time on the light tool itself, uh, specifically for exposure to pop a little bit of highlight uh, or to, to highlight the bike, I should say, to brighten that area a little bit. Um, and so that's helping me, I think, with the look I want. And now I'm gonna go and get a vignette. And this is really my final touch up here. So I'm gonna take this amount down. I'm gonna go like negative 34 and size is about 28. Uh, my roundness, I gotta look at that, okay. I'm going to the left, so a little bit more rectangular. And my feathering, I usually do feathering fairly high because that just kind of ensures a smoother transition. Now I need to place the center over here. Uh, I'm gonna place the center over here, kind of near that second bike. So something about like that, I'm gonna say done. And inner light, I'm gonna pop that uh, about 21. So as you can see, I'm using the inner light on the vignette placed there to help kind of brighten that area that's kind of between the two bikes. But here's the other thing you can do. You can also go in, and because I added a vignette, I like the vignette in those three corners. I don't really want it in that corner. So you can go in and just click erase, and you can come over here and basically just erase the vignette from this corner of the photo. It's not heavy, it's very light, but I just wanna erase it anyway. So if you click on the eyeball, you can kind of see what I've done. I've taken the vignette out of that part of the photo. And again, it wasn't heavy, but you can customize a vignette using the eraser. So now remember, white reveals, black conceals, white reveals. So most of the photo is capturing that vignette. This tiny little corner is not. Same thing up here, well, opposite thing, but same thing about black and white. Black conceals, white reveals. So the adjustment I did here to the exposure is being revealed just in that area around the bike and not in the rest of the photo. And that's really my edit, my friend. So let me show you, there's the before, the um, you know straight shot, it's kind of limited visibility in the street because of shadow, and there's the after. Now, after you've made these adjustments, you can come back in and you might say, well, it's a little too shadowy over there, Jim. Okay, well, I can come over here to this adjustment layer too, pull that down a little bit, and just kind of lighten that. Now, everything else kind of disappeared because I'm, uh, uh, on the lower layer, so the uh, subsequent future edits haven't occurred. But I'm basically just reducing the amount of this layer, which is gonna brighten that area a little bit. I can click back up here to reactivate all the layers, and there you go, you can kind of see what I've done. Um, I also might think on this 
most recent layer that maybe it's a little bit too bright so I could pull that adjustment amount down. So again, it's really just experimentation, but what I wanted to show is, you know, I often will show how a particular mask type works on a specific video, but I wanted to show all of them and how you can combine them and get creative and do different things. So you can use these brush masks at the uh, layer level or at the filter layer, le uh, tool layer uh, level. Gosh, let me say that again. You can use brush masking, any of these masks really, at the layer level so that all your adjustments on that layer will be applied based on that mask or you can use these masking types at an individual tool or filter level. Um, here I mostly did layer level, but I did some uh, tool level as well. But the point is brush masking, radial masking, gradient masking, and luminosity masking, very powerful features, very flexible, gives you the ability to come in and really control an image and place you know, edits where you want them to apply at different uh, impact levels, right, based on the amount of masking as well as using the adjustment amount slider if you're doing that mask at the layer level. So let's look at the before. There it is, and there's the after and this sliding scale. You can see, I mean, we made color adjustments, we made structure adjustments, we made a lot of lighting adjustments, and it was really all in the name of just fun and creativity, but also demonstrating how I may use masks of different types multiple times on the same image even though most of my videos focus on one type of masking, just to demonstrate that. I wanted to put them all together, kind of challenge myself to do something fun and different here. And I hope it's given you some ideas to use on your own images. So that's really it for this one, my friends. One more time, there's the before and the after. Jump in, have fun with masks, dive in, be creative, do something fun, and come back for more. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget that. And I'll see you really soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.